Now, if I put on a tie, will you take me more seriously? I think so, because today we're talking about a pretty exciting and important topic. And now I look somewhere like an engineer, a job that I never had. Hello and welcome back to Thomas Pynchon's Gravity Springbow. And today let's talk about, briefly, let's briefly recover some lost lessons from reading this book. So I read Thomas Pynchon's Gravity Springbow as a part of my reading challenge, the No Fear Tough Books Challenge. And I can tell you that this is a trippy read. And if you have a book that scares the bejesus out of you, be sure to join the challenge and post pictures of your reading progress over on Instagram by hashtagging your photo under No Fear Tough Books. We've received some amazing posts um, on there on that on that thread. So be sure to check it out if you actually have a book that you really want to tackle. The entire premise of the challenge is to confront your own fears. Uh, surrounding this entire subject of reading difficult books. And here in this video, I am going to discuss or talk about, relay, teach three lessons that I've learned from reading this mammoth of a book. First and foremost, consistency always trumps number of pages read. I think at this point of this video, man, I've talked about this concept ad nauseum at this point. Number of pages that you've read on a daily basis actually doesn't really matter that much. A lot of people get really excited. Get, they get really excited about reading um, for the first three days of their No Fear Tough Books challenge and they read about 50 pages a day and they burn themselves out. So you have this guy, he's like, oh, I've read 50 pages of Infinite Jest. He's gonna end up telling you that um, he's read 100 pages and now he's no longer reading the book. That's not exactly something you want. You really want to keep the consistency going by reading less on a daily basis so you can actually prolong the habit because it's like compound interest. If you read a little bit every single day, it's gonna pile up over time. And maybe after a month or a month and a half, you can actually dig through one of these big mammoths. Sometimes you really surprise yourself because you know, at first glance, this thing is extremely, extremely big looking. And it's not going to be immediately obvious that you know you can actually finish this thing if you stick to a reading habit of 15 pages a day. But if you do the math, if you read 30 pages a day, for example, that's a pretty that's a pretty moderate goal. In a month, you can finish this thing. Of course, I slacked off for a few days, so that's why it took me a month and a half instead of instead of instead of a month for me to finish this thing. But at the end of the day, consistency is going to save your ass. Don't be impatient. Stick to your reading routine of like 15 to 30 pages a day, and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna work out wonders for you. Whatever whatever book you're whatever book you're tackling from your shelf. And the second lesson here is that don't expect yourself to understand everything when you're reading this book for the first time. In the case of Gravity's Rainbow, it's it's impossible to understand it when you're reading it for the first time. It's just plain impossible to capture everything Pynchon had to say. I think at this point, I've probably understood less than 5% of the, this entire book um, after reading it for the first time. If it's a high quality piece of work, it's going to be thematically layered. It's going to be intricately constructed. It's going to be something that's gonna take you a little time to really digest. Hence, by having this wild expectation for you to somehow digest everything on your, on your first try, that's just kind of like a, that's kind of like a, Pipe dream. When you're reading it for the first time, don't pay too much attention to illusions. Don't pay too much attention to narrative constructions. You know, you can focus on that kind of stuff when you're when you're reading it for the second time. Because on one hand, it's going to be much easier because you've got the framework of the narrative down. On the other hand, you're actually going to enjoy it so much more if you just bring the mindset of experience um, into your first reading. Let the prose wash over you. Let the ridiculous stuff wash over you in the case of Thomas Pynchon and let whatever imagery that decided to stay in your brain, stay in your brain. What's going to happen is that these lingering images in your head after you've read it for the first time, um, they're going to draw you back into the book. And when you're reading it for the second time, that's when you can really, you know, dig your heels into this piece of literature. I think a hallmark of a great book is that you can read it over and over and over again to derive new lessons and new meanings out of just you know the single block of text. So that's the second lesson that I've learned. Focus on the experiential side of things instead of focusing on the minutia. Third thing, which I think is the most important lesson that I've taken away from this entire reading experience, which is that reading ideally should become a part of your life. And I think I really got a good palpable sense of it after, after I finished this thing. So before I thought reading was just some like really big activity out there that I have to, you know, have to apply myself to it in a very monastic kind of manner. Sticking to this routine of like 15 to 30 pages a day, I no longer think of reading as a big task, which I think it's a really big advantage if you're a reader. If you view reading as too big of a task, you're gonna scare yourself away before you even crack open a book. Whereas if you take a very laid back attitude toward reading, whereas if you integrate reading into your into your daily habits, you know, by sticking to your 15 to 30 pages a day, you actually be more willing to read because it's already a part of you. Reading is a part of you and you don't actually have to read that much on a daily basis to read a lot in your lifetime. Here's how it works out in my brain. If I can finish Pynchon um, in a month and a half, then does that mean I can also dig through a book of a similar size? 
with another month and a half of effort, all of a sudden reading world literature or this journey of tackling the canon, the canonical works, all of a sudden that journey no longer seems that daunting anymore. If I have the proper habits down, it's just, just going to be a matter of consistency, really. If you stick to it, you can dig through a lot of tough books. If you want to read Ulysses, apply the same rule. If you want to read uh, Count of the Monte Cristo, apply the same rule. And actually after Thomas Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow, I really want to read Burroughs' Naked Launch. This book had me on my list forever. And you know, I think here's my chance to tackle this thing into the ground once and for all. And the really magical part of this entire reading challenge is that reading right now is actually really, really damn pleasurable because I'm not expecting much from myself on a daily basis. I'm actually relaxing myself into the book on a daily basis. And that in turn gave me the freedom to really sink my teeth into the book. That really in turn gave me the freedom to pursue literature at a very leisurely pace. So at the end of the day, I can say to myself, I've enjoyed every single one of the books I've read and I've taken every bits of them in. And I think that's a lot more important than reading a hundred books in a year. That's just um, not a very interesting metric for me. So that's all I have for this week's episode. If you're interested in the full book review for Thomas Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow, it is going to be a three part series. I'm still filming the third part, which will come out uh, later in the week, you can check them out over at Patreon. Patreon is one of the few ways that I'm able to keep this little show going. I post exclusive book reviews on Patreon, so if that's what you're interested in, be sure to go ahead and check those videos out. And also by becoming a patron, you will be invited into a private Discord group. And last time I checked, we hosted a Jackbox TKO game in that server, so that was pretty damn awesome. Any amount of contribution is appreciated. And tomorrow, Clark and Cody from the Socratic Method podcast, uh, we will be doing a live stream on Clark's channel. So I'll leave all the details in the description down below, so be sure to check that live stream out. Um, I think we'll be on the live stream for a few hours, so ask questions, ask philosophical questions, ask funny questions, um, post silly emojis, whatever you want. You know, we're gonna have a blast in that live stream. Anyway, that's all I have for this episode, and I hope you are having a great week so far, and I will see you in the next video.